Alright guys, so I decided to try things a little different this time around and do a review that was basically recorded over gameplay footage where I just kind of talk about my experience with the game and this method is a, well, rather this format is a little less formal, you could say. Um, and also it should require a lot less editing, so let's see how this goes. First of all, I want to say something that this game has taught me is not to judge a game based off of its initial trailer or stuff that people have said. So let, let me let me explain. Um, Steam World Heist was basically like it it got quite a bit of coverage. Like Total Biscuit has covered. It plenty of times. I believe it was even on his top 10 list. Uh, other YouTubers have also talked about it. And uh, so, so it's not really a game that was kind of hidden. But here's the thing. Every time I saw anything about this gameplay, nothing, nothing appealed to me. Like, I did not like the art style. Well, well, particularly. It, it didn't stand out to me as something I'd like. Um, I don't consider myself a fan of turn-based tactics games. And I didn't really find the idea of it being a side-scrolling 2D style turn-based game. Like, I didn't find that appealing at all. So, nothing about this game appealed to me in any way, shape, or form. And I, even on Steam, I had like marked it as not interested. <laughs> um, so how I came about playing this game is basically, it came bundled with a bunch of other games in one of the Humble Monthly bundles. And so I was like, uh, okay, fine, now I have it. I might as well give it a go. And uh, I was really, really shocked. So. First of all, like I said, this game is a turn-based tactics game. It has, like, light RPG mechanics, as well as, um, like, light, light in the sense that you manage everyone's inventory, and they level up, and they get skills, and you, you get to talk to different crewmates, and, and there is, like, a bit of roleplay as a pirate robot in space. So... Like, like that, there is a bit of RPG stuff, but it's not like to a point where you have like skill trees where you'd actually be able to choose different skills. Um, yeah, it's, and it is pretty fun. I like that it's light because it just gives you this thing of just getting in, playing like a level, and then getting out. Now, each of the levels is sort of chosen from an overworld kind of Super Mario style map where you go and it shows you like a rating, like three out of four stars or like four stars that are empty or whatever. And you get to try and obviously max out the amount of stars that you get, sort of like a mobile game. Um, and that's, that's basically the format. The... The art style itself is, like I said, 2D, and it, they're going for like a everything is sort of robotic kind of look, with uh, basically everything being a robot of some sort. The thing is, at first glance you may think everything kind of looks generic, but the more you play, the more you notice like how the enemy bosses are like really designed in, in very special ways. For example, like one one boss is completely different from another in, in various aspects. And it, I didn't actually expect that. Even with the enemy variety, like certain enemies are designed in such a way that it makes sense that these guys will do more damage this way and their weak spots are in logical locations. So, it was it was uh, it was a pretty pleasant surprise. Um, 
the other thing with this game is the story sort of is just okay. It's more of those, uh, one of those we have to save the universe kind of stories. But what really sets this game apart is the characters. The characters that you get along the way as part of your pirate ship crew are amazing. They ha all have their different personalities and they all have different skills and stuff which kind of play off of their actual personalities. So I'll give you an example. You have like a, a strong uh, man kind of robot. Like he's a, he's a robot who has like a dumbbell in one hand and he's always like pumping iron. And uh, he, he's written as like a Russian, a Russian character. His name is Ivansky. And he, he basically, like his abilities are all to do with him being like super meaty. He has like taunts, for example, and uh, and just being like an overall tank. Whereas you have uh, another uh, character who you get along the way called B, who is ex-military and all her skills are to do with explosives and that kind of stuff. So. It somehow matches their personalities as well with the skills that you get for each character. So I thought that was pretty enjoyable. And they all, as, as you go through the story, they all have like different bits of dialogue that, that give like their take on the various situations that you're coming into contact with. Now, when you select a mission and you begin to, to go into it, you get to choose a weapon for each one of the crewmates that you're taking for that mission. You get to choose two utility things and you get to choose a hat. The utility th things range from like armor, health packs, uh, an extra sidearm sometimes, or a grenade. And uh, the hats are just purely cosmetic. Um, in terms of the weapons variety, you have handguns, sharpshooters, assault guns and heavy weapons now each each uh, each weapon kind of each weapon group kind of has like different variants for example in handguns you get various types of pistols in assault weapons you get shotguns and SMGs in heavy weapons you get RPGs and grenade launchers in uh, in sharpshooters you get scoped pistols or sniper rifles so there's there's plenty of stuff that you get to pick from and uh and equip on different characters and uh during each level there'll be these little boxes that you collect they call it swag it's really just the loot system so it's it's pretty cool and Every, every level is not too long a level, so it's really satisfying. Like you go in, you play a level, and you stop. And and that's, that's pretty much the game loop, whereas the story also does progress. One other thing I'll say about this game is the music. The music is amazing. Um, the music almost acts as like a reward every time you finish like a huge quest or story based thing where you'll go back to a bar or something to turn the quest in and there'll be a robotic band which will be playing a tune and the entire soundtrack well not the entire soundtrack but most of the soundtrack has like vocal tracks and they're all like related to the theme the overall theme of this world so it's it's pretty cool in that sense so here's the other thing about the gameplay. It's it's touted as a turn-based tactics game, but it's so simple to understand and control. They recommend you use a controller with this game and it works fine. It did work fine with mouse and keyboard as well, but I would recommend controller as well. Just because, um, well, they recommend it and I found that it was a lot more intuitive in getting you to logical places that you want to move to a little faster. 
So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty solid title and I'd suggest that everyone try this game out. It's one of those games that you should just try. Even if you're not the biggest video game fan, you'll probably enjoy this. It is that kind of game. In terms of uh, visuals, if you have a vision impairment, it's only towards the later levels where contrast might become an issue. But because of the turn-based nature of this, it's very easy to take your time and decide what you want to do next. Um, also, most of uh, the status effects and uh, passives normally have like a really noticeable sound cue to let you know when something triggers. For example, whenever uh, your vanguard gets hit, it will trigger a payback, which will do extra damage. So whenever they get hit, you'll get like a, like a cool, crunchy, robotic noise that will let you know that that's been triggered. So that the way that's done is pretty pretty awesome. There isn't much in terms of directional sound, which is something I guess the game could have improved on. But again, turn-based, so you have all the time in the world to really look at the map in its entirety and decide what you want to do. Speaking of the maps, the maps are normally randomly generated for the most part. However, during um, the later stages, they get huge. They get really big, but that's towards the end. Um, I remember one map in particular being really, really big. Uh, but for the most part, they're all manageable. How long you take in each map will also depend on the difficulty. On higher difficulties, it actually scales really well in terms of the way the AI reacts and the amount of enemies that appear when alarms trigger and etc. So you may need to play around with that to find the sweet spot. I'd recommend just playing it on casual and then bumping it up if it's too boring. Um, I did play this game in casual and I had a lot of fun with it. So hey. Anyways, that's all I really have to say about this game. I'm going to leave you with just gameplay footage for the rest of this session. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you like this format. If you prefer this format over the format that I did for Oculus, let me know. This one is a little tricky to do, although I could get used to it. Whereas the Oculus one required a lot more editing. So yeah, let me know. Later.